Amen. Okay. So we have this topic, the fear of reaching out. And so I, uh, over the week, I've been asking a lot of people, what do you think the fear of reaching out is? And seeing what they think it is and, you know, what it... And it seemed like the main thing everybody said was getting rejected. I'm afraid someone's going to reject me. They're not going to want to talk to me. They're going to say, leave me alone or think we're weird, which we are. You know, we're, we're, we're weird, but that's okay. We can be a fool for Jesus, right? That's okay. So, but I want to just define a reaching out. So, because there's all kinds of uh, Christianese things that people might think that is. That's our unique language we have, you know, Christianese. As, as a joke, don't worry. Okay, so the definition of reaching out. Connecting with people, with pre-believers and believers, by way of helping someone, as Paul was saying, uh, sharing our hope, the sharing our hope, where your hope comes from, uh, generosity, and also praying for someone, offering to pray for someone, and I'm going to focus on that one a little bit more in, uh, in this time here. And so this is really called uh, releasing his kingdom, releasing God's kingdom. And where this can happen is everywhere and anywhere and every day. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, Trader Joe's, Home Depot. <laughs> we can release his kingdom, and I'll explain more what that means. But I want you just to reflect back maybe the first time someone shared with you about God or about Jesus in your life, that it really connected with you. Can you remember that time, the first time someone shared their faith or they prayed for you or they guided you or they were generous with you with their time, with their support, with their love? And uh, what that was like. You know, for me, this coworker, I was 31 years old. That's pretty long to live. And she told me about this guy that she met I don't know who this guy was, because he took away her fear, he took away her worry, he took away her anxiety, and he healed her hip. So I had no idea who she was talking about. I'm sure she said the name Jesus, but somehow I didn't hear that. I was just like, uh-huh, okay, uh-huh. But I was drawn to what she was saying. She was actually my supervisor, so I had to listen to her. No, not really, but she was, but we're in Gardena. And uh, so... She was telling me this guy, and I go, well, that's really great. You got free from all that. And then she gave me this book about this lady that got healed. And, and then, the, you know, a year later, I went to a healing service to see if God was really real, that people got healed. And then I went through all this transformation, and I got healed, and I, got, I found Jesus, and I got a big Holy Spirit encounter, and got things taken off me, and things healed that were inside of me, and filled up with all this love, peace, and joy, and power. So I got the Holy Spirit car wash. <laughs> But if she hadn't <clears throat> spoken to me or shared with me, you know, I don't remember anybody ever talking to me about God or about God being real, okay, God being real, <laughs> God's presence being real, you know. And I don't know about you, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I can get bored just doing the Christian life, right? Oh, people praising getting bored. Come on. <laughs> I can get bored. And... It's not okay for me, it's not okay with me, if nobody's getting saved. You know what I mean? That's not okay. That's nobody's meeting Jesus in our community. It's not okay. It's not okay that nobody's getting delivered, that nobody's getting free from addiction, that nobody's life is getting transformed and changed. And you don't have to do it. We don't do it. He does it. He just wants the opportunity to move with us and touch someone. So you have family members that don't know Jesus probably, right? Everybody does. You have friends that don't. These long-term relationships we have with people. And I'll share with you how to connect with them. It's not that we have to go there and win the debate over whether God's real and Jesus is God's son and all this and that. And hermeneutics and apologetics and all these fancy words. And sanctification and they don't know what we're talking about, but it's that we have something to give. And whatever you've received from God, you can give it away. You don't need any more. You actually don't need to pray for it. You can pray for revival, but actually we carry revival inside of us. So if you feel dull or you feel, you know, like 
not very excited about God, you can just ask God to increase your hunger. Ask God to increase the desire inside of you. And he'll kind of light the fire inside of you more to want to extend his kingdom more and to, you know, draw closer to him. So, I mean, there's the video of uh, Keith Green asleep in the light. I was going to show up, but I I decided not to show that video. That'd be pretty offensive. But basically what he's saying is, I don't know if it'd be offensive. He would, he's saying that a lot of Christians are asleep in the light and people are drowning in the dark, but we're like, you know, too busy or just hanging out by ourselves and we're not paying attention to people that are drowning. All right? So I'm not trying to hit you in the head. I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm not trying to say you've got to do more and you're not doing enough. But people are drowning. People are drowning. Now, they may have a lot of stuff. They're still drowning. <laughs> you know, poor means uh, poor in spirit. So you can be poor in spirit whether you have money or you don't have money. Right? And it doesn't mean you're going to convince anybody about God, but it means that some people are ripe for God to touch them. And so it's us having the eyes to see who that person is and who God's drawing us to as we go through our week, <clears throat> throughout the week. So Jesus is the king. God raised him from the grave and he put him in heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So Jesus is called the king of kings. And he has authority over all things. So as we go out, as we, as we participate with him, we're co-heirs with him. We're called sons and daughters of the king. So we're also called royalty. So when uh, Princess Di's grandkids, Prince William's kids are growing up now, and they're 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they're not just kings, but they're telling them, you're royalty. You're royalty. So kind of to me what that means is their life is not their own. There's the, their focus of their life is to be the benefit of the kingdom that they're ruling over. That's their purpose, to make sure the people are okay. We're called royalty. That's a calling. It's an accountability. It's a responsibility. It's a mission that we're to extend his kingdom. And he's willing to give us that authority to do that. And that's awesome, right? Right. Jesus said, you say rightly that I'm a king. But my kingdom is not of this world. It's not from here. So what? His kingdom is not from here because everybody wanted him to be the king like David. Come on, let's rule over Israel and everything. And he goes, he goes, no, no, my kingdom is not from here. So what's his kingdom? His kingdom rules over darkness. It's a spiritual kingdom. I know you know this. But I'm saying it anyway. <laughs> his kingdom rules over darkness. So what's the darkness in our life? We have addiction. We have poverty. We have disease. We have division, right? We have depression. We have hopelessness. We have all that. Those are all from the, I won't call it a kingdom. We'll just call it the world of darkness. And he wants to rule over that. He can rule over that. So how does he rule over that? He wants to rule with, with peace over anxiety, with healing over disease, with hope over despair, right? With provision over poverty. That's his kingdom ruling over that. And he wants us to participate in that as we go about our life. He wants to release it through us. <clears throat> and just as he did here with his his disciples, his followers, he, he sent them out. He's sending us out. He sent us out, and he's sending you out and me out today and always. He sends us out, and he sends us out to do what? To extend his kingdom rule and reign over sickness, disease. Yes, demons are real. And when we pray for other people, we're just joining in his victory. The battle's already won. We're just joining in his victory. This is sort of a ministry team training talk, I realize, Daniel. (laughs) Okay? So uh, we're going to watch a a little video, and you can see how easy it is to release his kingdom. You want to start it, and then I'll... There's the sounds down a little bit. And so this is someone in South Africa in like a CVS uh, drugstore, and he's actually a guy from Oklahoma. He's a vineyard pastor. He's He's in South Africa, and he's doing divine appointment. He's just talking to someone and saying, hey, can I pray for you? You seem like you're limping. Can I pray for you? And let's just see what happens in this, uh, in this store here. What happened as I just grabbed your hand? There was just this warm feeling going over, over my body. And it just left. What do you think about that? Oh, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It was wonderful. And I told you that was Jesus. Mm, it's and amazing. It's amazing. And you're a Christian. Yeah. 
I'm just telling you, this is what Christians do. And so I just want to encourage you that are out there as you go. Um, Jesus is alive and he just wants to work through us. And our job is just to put him on display. Hey, can you put your hand out towards the camera mm -hmm. and say, Jesus, Jesus, would you heal those, you heal those who, have back issues like me? who have back issues like me in Jesus name? In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so, much. <laughs> so tell me your name. Donna. Donna. Angelica. And Angelica. Mm -hmm. well, I was just with Angelica. Angelica had pain for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I just held her hand and she got completely healed. And then we came over to her friend Donna and I had Angelica hold Donna's hand. That's all she did. And what happened to you? The pain just disappeared. What do you wow. mean it just disappeared? It disappeared. I didn't feel anything at all. And I could bend down where I couldn't. Yeah. Because I was stiff. Yeah. And Amazing. even the pain in my, my heels also. Just gone. Just gone. Completely gone. Completely gone. And so, and we told you that was that was Jesus. Jesus, yes. And you know Jesus. Yes, I yes. do. <laughs> and so, Angelica knows Jesus. And mm. this is the thing. We get to do this as Christians. Mm. We just yeah. get to pray for those who are in need. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. can you imagine if all of us as Christians just did that? What would happen for people? The world would be a better place. Come on. So you think so you could do this better. now? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. 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 Definitely. I know you can do it. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Come on, Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So these are my friends Angelica and Donna, mm -hmm. and we came over to another coworker. And your name is Miranda. Yeah, and so all they did was just uh, hold Donna, held her hand, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what happened to you? It's just all the pain gone. Just the pain left yeah. out of your back mm -hmm. and out of your head. How long have you had that pain? Since t during the day, I was feeling the pain, but now it's now it's completely gone. It's gone. And that's Jesus. And this is what Christians do is we just pray for the sick and we put Jesus on display and just I'm just coming to get hairspray <laughs> that's all I was doing and, you and, and, you healed us. and Jesus all healed and us. Jesus just healed these yeah. beautiful ladies and God is using them to heal the sick now yes. that's putting Jesus on display okay so we have two more uh, ladies what's your name and your name okay so what I did is I just again I'm just buying hairspray. Now look at all this that's spread now. Jesus has healed all these ladies. And she just, what, you touched her hand, held her hand, and then all the pain left your knees. How long have you been having that? No, it's almost two, three weeks now. And so did you feel like a pain or? Yes, it's always in here. Okay, and then did you feel like a warmth or something? What happened? No, it's very sore if I walk. But, but when she, when she held your hand, what happened? What happened? What did you feel that moment when he took our hands? The heat and the pain just left. And that's Jesus just buying hairspray. And then our other friend came up here. You've had what problem? My back pain. Back pain and what? And my stomach. Your stomach. And she just held her hand, right? Mm -hmm. And what did you what did you experience? I felt my boobs are like it was moving or something that was happening in my body that I don't know what was happening. That's amazing. So Jesus just healed her. Yes. This is the power of Jesus, putting Jesus on display. And all they did was just touch and you know God wants to move through us and he wants to heal through us because God loves people yes. so much and so you guys are all Christians right yes. and so you guys should be able to do this all the time now um, just touch someone pray for them ask Jesus to come and you'll come and bring healing and guys I'm telling you again just as you go as you go get hairspray look look at all these people these ladies too yes and so Jesus wants to just use us uh, to put them on display Come on, Jesus. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> hey, ladies, just put your hands out towards this and just say, Jesus, Jesus. Bring, healing bring healing to all that watch this. To all that watch this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here we go. This is what we're doing. We're just having them hold their hands. Now watch. You have a problem where? The sinus. And where else? Okay. Okay. Now watch this. Now check your sinuses. Check your body. What? She said the yeah. windows are open. Is it open? Yes. What else is going on? <laughs> where, where else did you have pain? All in the senses. And it's gone now. Yes. Did you feel like a heat? Just It just left. Now you can breathe. Yes. That's Jesus. What do you think about that? That's amazing. And she just held your hand. She got healed. 
Because the Bible says, freely receive, freely give. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, are you a pharmacist? No. I'm a Just works here in Clifton. So, he came up here. He was watching Jesus heal everybody. Again, just getting hairspray. He's, I want you to put your hands up, where, on your ribs. Okay. No, no, no. Here, here. How about this? Just hold his hand. Just, here. Just hold his hand. Just hold his hand. Hold his hand for a second. Hold his hands. Now, just, yeah. Okay. Now move your body and check. Check to see. I'm okay. What? I'm okay. What's, hap what's happened? The pain's gone away. It's gone away. How long have you had that pain? For two weeks. Two weeks. And on a scale from zero to ten, what would you put your pain at just a minute ago before she held your hand? A good six. And now it's gone. Now it's gone. 100%. All she did was hold your hand because she's a Christian. Are you a Christian? I'm a Christian. Come on. This is what Jesus does as he brings healing to us just with a touch. What do you think about that? It's awesome. Say, come on, man. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> Pick and pay Howard Center. Where, where? where? Howard Pick and pay Howard Okay. And so what just happened to you? We were healed. You were healed? Yes. yes. And... Well, you didn't get healed. You, <laughs> you had pain in your body. No, no, no. no. But you I had pain. pain is. How long have you had that? It's from this morning. And what happened when they prayed for you? And then I was just feeling free. My body's shaking. Your body's shaking? Yes. It's gone? What happened to you? I was also healed. Yes? Yeah. I, I got a back pain this morning. Yes? Then she just... Did she just prayed for you? Yes. yes. And then I think it was over here, Tammy, you, right? Did you end up praying for... First one, yeah. And so Jesus is just loves to heal people. All we're doing yes. is coming to buy a bottle of water because we need water. <laughs> and we're putting Jesus on display. And look at this. Amen. Smiles on our faces. Yes. 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 Hey, put your hand out like this and say, Jesus. Jesus. Bring healing. Bring, bring healing. To all who watch this. To all who watch this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. <laughs> So this has been shown uh, online uh, on, on YouTube, and as people have watched this, they've put in, uh, in the chat that they've received healing when they pray for everybody. Anybody feel better after watching that? You feel better emotionally, right? It's pretty easy. So this, apparently, they went to 80 people got touched from this thing. They just went through the stores, to the stores, to the stores. And look how simple it was. I mean, it was like two seconds, right? And it's not, let me convince you about God. It's like, can I pray for you? Most people will say, okay, you can pray for me. Why not? Why, why wouldn't I, you know, especially if they express a need. So that was just awesome. So I just showed you that to see how, how simple it is. So let me just go through maybe what some of our fears of reaching out might be. So we fear maybe he's not outside our gatherings that, you know, the world seems really dark, and maybe we don't want to go where he isn't. We just want to stay in our, our little our groups, our services, our ministries, our gatherings, and not out there. But the reality is, is God's already out there. God's already out there. God is near the lost. God is near those that are drowning. You know, he's not just in our gatherings. He's definitely here, but he's, he's out there already. And really, I feel what God is asking is, will you go out and come to where I am? Will you go out and come to where I am? Where I am. I'm already there. So he's looking for kingdom partners. Now, that might be a different way to think of your relationship with God, like partnering. Because, you know, he's so awesome and we're so humble and we're just little people and he's big God. How can I partner with this awesome God? But that's... That's, the way, that's his design, that's his plan. In Genesis, he said, create man and woman in my image, so we bear his image. And he said, let them rule. He allows us to rule. He trusts us. <laughs> we may not trust ourselves, but he trusts us to extend his kingdom. Everybody say, he trusts me. Say it again. He trusts me. Good. Now you've got to believe it and let, it, let him work through you. So he's looking for kingdom partners. A lot of times we want God to do things for us, but really God wants to do things with us. He wants to do things with us. 
So I feel he's calling you to take a step to join him in what he's doing. And it's different for every person here because everybody has a different life, a different schedule, different, you know, friend group. And he's calling you to, to step into what he's doing with these people that you're encountering all week. And sometimes it's a stranger at, at, a, at a store, but sometimes it's a, you know, a strange family member. So when Jesus did all his healings and all his miracles, there was a phrase that was used. It was among the people. He went among the people. That when the disciples went out and did signs and wonders and came back saying, I can't believe it. Everybody believed. People got healed. Miracles happened. They couldn't believe it. They were rejoicing. They were partnering. They were doing it together. And it was among the people. So it was in the villages, in the streets, in the houses. It wasn't necessarily in the temple. It was out among the people. And that's where God is. And that's where God's moving. And that's where God wants us to, to connect with him. Jesus said, when he was doing all these healings and everybody was amazed, he said, I only do what I see my father doing. So he was partnering with his father. The disciples did all their ministry. They were partnering with the Holy Spirit together. God uses your gifts. He uses your voice. He uses your talents. He uses the, the abilities put in you to work through you. So it's together. He wants it to be all of him and all of you. Not none of us and all of him. All of him and all of you. Can you believe that? <laughs> all of you, right? He trusts you. He trusts you to, use, to make the good decision. He trusts you to do the right thing. And if we lean on him and we are open to his moving, we'll be able to go with him as he goes. So another thing that might happen, we get really comfortable in our relationships, in our relationship with God the, the way it is. And it happens with every sociological group that there's a natural inward drift that happens, that it becomes just us and us and them, and that our focus is on what we need and what we're doing, and, you know, we just keep everything in here. And then, like I said earlier, uh, you know, we even get our own language, like uh, Christianese that people can't understand. You know, we have phrases and, and things that we say that they don't really understand what we're talking about. But we really need to fight against this inward drift to have it be just our gatherings. Now, we can get saved and meet God and have a relationship with God and try to keep safe, try to be, protect ourselves from the mean world out there so we don't get dirty. <laughs> and then we can just hang on until our life's over and then we can meet God. Right? And that's what, that, there's a real tendency for you to do that. But you have to not give in to that. Because if you live that kind of life, it's only half of what God's plan is for you or for me. There's a whole other story he's wanting to write for the history of your life. And it involves you connecting with another person, you extending his kingdom. That you would have a lot of those stories at the end of your life. This person you talked to, this person you prayed for, this person that you helped. And there'd be stories of what happened to that person, too. Part of the story is us connecting with them. The other is what happens to them. If you ever had a Holy Spirit encounter, you know, I heard someone else tell their testimony. It was like, one second. <laughs> I was going here, doing this, and then God went, Whoosh! and that was it. And their life was totally changed. They were never the same. So those are the kind of stories God wants to write through us. When we pray for someone, we don't know if anything's going to happen. Your leg's injured, I'll pray for healing. I don't know if you're going to get healed, right? I can't heal you. I hope you get healed. But sometimes, and a lot of times, people don't get healed or something doesn't happen that we want to pray for. But it doesn't mean to give up. It doesn't mean don't pray, right? Because one of these times, someone's going to get healed. <laughs> One of these times, some, something dramatic is going to happen. The Holy Spirit's going to fall and touch someone really strong and change a life. And when that happens, it's going to be a snowball effect. The hunger will increase in people, and more and more people are going to want to interface, inter, interact with God. So there are healings and there are miracles happening all over the earth, all over the world, and actually all over America, believe it or not. So God is just trying to call us into something more to get the other half of the story of our life. So there's two parts, I think, 
that I've learned recently about our relationship with God. It's like what we were doing in worship here earlier, the intimacy with God. We, God, God calls us to himself, just like he called the 12 disciples to himself, and he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and cure diseases, and he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. So there's intimacy. He calls them, us to himself to worship him, to pray with him, to fellowship with him, and to you know, be in this wonderful relationship with him. But it doesn't stop there. He's not like, okay, you're with me, just stay with me and don't go out anywhere else and don't do anything else. He also sends us out. He gives us his authority. See what it says there. He gave them, he called them to himself, and then he gave them power and authority, and he sent them out. And that's what he's doing with us. He's sending you out to extend his kingdom and to release it on others and to help his kingdom rule over darkness. Okay? So... Matthew 16, 19, he said, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. So I was like, oh, I just learned about this too. The keys to the kingdom. Like, who do you give your keys to? Who do you give your, your car keys to or your house keys or your work keys? Not many people, right? Who do you give your keys to? Someone you trust. Someone you trust, right? He trusts you. Back on that topic. <laughs> he trusts you. He's giving us the keys to his kingdom. And what do keys do? He's open things, right? Free the captives. We can open doors and free people. And keys lock things. We can lock up the darkness in their life and contain it so it's not there anymore. Or God can do it through us. He's given us the keys. He's released us to release the kingdom. So let's free the captives and be an unlocker. All right? So sometimes we also think, I don't know enough. But look at these... So I, don't, I can't talk to anybody else. I can't debate this. I don't know enough. But look at the people in the video there. What did they know? You know, some, they said they were Christians, but I have my doubts. Some of them might not have been Christians. They might have just been giving in to the pressure in the moment. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You know, because they're all pretty amazed that healing existed and something like that can happen. But they knew nothing. And what did they do? They gave everything away. They didn't, you know, go through a 30-minute wonderful worship set and hear a whole 30-minute talk. And then go, okay, I'm going to go do it. They just got it, and they just gave it. You don't have to know anything. <laughs> Besides, you want to extend mercy. You want to extend grace. You, you want to help someone else. It's amazing what God can do with people who know nothing but give away everything. Okay? We don't have to know so much. It's not about knowledge. Look at this 1 Corinthians 2.4 verse here. Paul is talking, and he said, My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So I think the Christianese world, we've really focused a lot on what we know. We really got to know a lot of this. We got to defend this and that. We got to argue this and that. We got to win a debate. This thing says nothing about winning a debate, you know, and you know, you ever watch TED Talks, anybody? You know, TED Talks are pretty good, right? I mean, they're pretty inspirational. They're pretty motivational. There's a lot of great speakers in the world. There's a lot of great, wonderful, persuasive human wisdom that's really good. That's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to compete with that because in a lot of ways, we can't compete with that. Some of it's too, too good. They're too good in terms of just human wisdom. But so what's our faith about then? Our faith rests on power. Our God is a supernatural God. I talk about miracles, and, and we might be like, well, yeah, that would be nice. Maybe I'll go to Africa with Jessica and let's see a miracle, you know? But we have a supernatural God. It's not a big deal for God to do a miracle. It's natural for him. It's super natural for us to see that and experience it, but it's not for him. But our faith rests on the fact that we have a Holy Spirit, Otherwise, we're just another philosophical, you know, group talking about wonderful ideas about how to live your life. Our faith rests on that Jesus was, died and rose. He was taken and risen from the grave. He came back to life. That's a miracle. You can't, you can't argue with that. You can't explain that. Someone could say, I don't believe it. That's fine. But can I pray for you anyway? <laughs> All right? So our faith rests on power. So we're depending on God to move and God to, to extend his, his grace on someone. When we helped them, last Friday night we went out after the encounter meeting and we sent like, a, like 15 people went out 
to walk around the streets and pray, and it was really wonderful praying for someone, talking to someone on the, waiting for a bus, and then meeting this guy. I was with this guy, Tim, and there's this lady with her walker waiting to cross the street, not at a crosswalk, and just huge cars going back and forth. And she's sitting there, like she must have been 85, and her family, like, crossed the street, and they're waiting for her to cross the street. And we're like, oh, wow, look at that. So we went over there, and we just helped the elderly lady cross the street. We stopped the traffic. We got her across the street. We did, good, did a good deed. And then we offered to pray for them. So it was really cool. So maybe you think you're not good enough. But again, whatever you've received, if you have hope, you can give someone hope. Okay? If you have a peace inside of you that you've got from God, you can, you can give someone peace. You know, if you've got love, forgiveness, you've received forgiveness, you can extend forgiveness. You can give it to someone else. You don't need to wait to get more stuff. And just being patient to uh, listen to people's stories. So uh, divine encounter is an expression used that you meet someone and then like, kind of like the video that, uh-oh, there's a God thing going on here. We start talking about God and then you see that God wants you to do something with that person. So this is something we do with training people in ministry team. We're going to do trainings on this if you're interested to learn how to do this. That you can actually, you know, hear from God and then do what he's doing with the person. And uh, so I've been praying for like one divine encounter a day. As I go through my day, whatever store I'm at, wherever I'm at, whoever I'm with, I'm trying to say, is this person God? Someone? We're going to talk about you here, God, with this person? And, but as you talk to people, especially if you have a relationship with them, they'll start to unravel their life. And you'll hear their story. So it's being patient and being supportive to hear, not just trying to jam something in someone, like selling something. And there's a need there. Everybody has a need, no matter who they are. And that's an opportunity to, to offer, can I pray for you about that? You know? And they may think, oh, you're going to go light a candle for me and pray for me? Yeah, sure, thanks. And I said, no, no, like right now. Can I pray for you right now? And they're like, oh, okay. So the prayers can be just like Jesus' prayers. Jesus' prayers were not very long, were they? It's like, eyes open, ears open, come forth, right? He had the authority. He didn't have to go, oh, God, you know, just yell and scream for God. Jesus is right next to us, okay? Holy Spirit is in you and then on you often for someone else. So just communing with God and learning to listen and to hear, you realize, well, God's here and there's something I'm supposed to say to this person and to find the, these openings, and they're there. They're there. Kathy, Kathy Greer, who's talked to her many times, she, she says, I'm at the point now where I consider every person I talk to all day a divine encounter. If something's going to happen in the conversation with this person, we're going to end up talking about God, or they're going to talk about something I could pray for for them. We had this guy came to our, our studio in San Pedro, and we had a music show, and we had some people doing dream interpretation, and some people drawing portraits, and and so we're looking for these divine encounters with these people coming in from the public. And this man came in, and so this guy, Chris, a friend, was, he was here sketching at the, uh, the festival recently. So he was talking with the guy, and I'm like, oh, should I pray for this guy? But the guy kept looking at me like, leave me alone. So I left him alone. And then, uh, and then they did the whole sketch thing, and then he stood up, and he says, yeah, and tomorrow I have to get surgery. And I said, what? So I looked over, and he says, yeah, my finger was all bent up like this. And uh, this, this and that, I have to get there. And they said, it's okay. But then my other hand has to get surgery. And <clears throat> he was an elderly man. And then so I said, hey, can we pray for your hand? So he was like, yeah. So we prayed for healing for his hand. And his, his, his finger was still there. Don't get excited. <laughs> Didn't go like that. But his face, he was going like, we're just, oh, God, come and heal his hand, you know, make his tendons extend and make his palm well and... His, he, he was going like, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. <laughs> so either because people care about his hand <laughs> or that God was touching him, but there was something going on with him. Everybody has a hunger inside of them. So God made everybody. doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are. God made everybody, right? Everybody has, you've heard of a God-shaped void inside of them. Everybody has a spirit and everybody has a yearning for God. They really do. And you'll see it in people when they are getting close to something about God, there's, their face lights up. There's like a glow because they're finally getting water 
on the parched, dry ground that's happening, whether it's in a conversation or someone's praying or there's something going on. And the, the, the dumbfounding thing for me, I always thought, well, I have to carry God out to these people. I'm going to take God out there to all those people because they don't have God. No. But I found like, wow, God's on, God's on them. So at the moment I'm thinking, oh, I feel I should say this, like God's already touching them. He's already moving. He's, so we're partnering together. So it's not about us being, you know, Superman or Superwoman. It's just going with what he's doing. And then there was an 18-year-old girl. She was going to sing at our show. And then I know her. And then right before, she, she was really nervous because her friend was going to videotape it. She's going to turn in the application for college. Cause, so the song's going to be a big deal because this video means if she gets in for her audition, if she gets into college, she wants to be a singer. So she's all like, huh. So she goes, oh, I'm so nervous. I can't believe I'm so nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous. So I said, uh, do you want us to, can we pray for you about that? And she went like, huh? She goes, no. I said, okay. So you're going to get turned down sometime. <laughs> it's okay. And she, she was really nervous. So. so she said, you can do another show in a week so we can re record it again. But uh, so it's okay. To, you're just saying, can I help you? It's like someone's in the desert and they're thirsty and they're like, would you want some water? I mean, that's what it is. I was going to make all these slides that we're walking around with water and everybody's in the desert and like, this is what life is really like. <clears throat> or it's all dark and we have all these flashlights and we're walking around the light in the dark and we don't realize we're carrying the light. <clears throat> I remember when I worked, I, I used to work in a church and the church was so big, I like never saw a non-Christian. I remember saying, I, the only, maybe the guy at the gas station, he might be a non-Christian. Because everybody, it was, so, that's, it was a giant community. And then I went from there, Orange County, to like Santa Monica. Well, there wasn't any. It was the opposite. And I'm like, God, how can you do this to me, God? How can you do that? I can't talk about you here. No one wants to hear about you. Everybody hates you. And, uh, and he said, the light shines stronger in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. And sure enough, through relationships, through coworkers and people, there's so many great things that God did in terms of prophecy and healing and, and drawing people to him. So the opportunities are there. So there's an expression called Flip the script. So when we say we're going to pray for someone, everybody say, flip the script. Okay, say it again. I said, say it again. Come on. No, I'm kidding. The kids get that one, though. So we flip the script. So where there's sadness or depression, we pray for hope. If someone has anxiety or worry, we just pray for peace. Disease, physical pain, we pray for healing. Poverty, pray for, pray for provision. Again, his kingdom ruling over the darkness. So it isn't complicated. You don't have a giant, get a giant prophetic word from God to tell you this or that. Someone says they're miserable, they're feeling bad. Let's pray for peace for them. Pray for love for them. You know, but we're just counting on God to move, like in the store there. Look what they did. Like I said, hold the hand. I didn't see anybody praying. He was probably praying in the spirit because no one said, oh God, heal her. Hold the hand, two seconds, bingo. <laughs> it happened. But the other thing about healing, and then I'll wrap it up. There's a lot of people who do a lot of healing around the earth, and uh, they're ready, they have a healing ministries, and they have lots of books, and, they have, and a lot of people get healed wherever they go. So 40% or 50%, which is a lot. And, uh, but they all say a similar thing, I found, that when they felt like, oh, I want to start praying for people, that no, nothing happened. For a long time, like this guy Todd White, he said, I'm going to pray for 10 people a day. I'm, I'm trying to do one a day. He's, I'm going to do 10 a day. So 10 a day, embarrassing himself, looking like a fool in the stores, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing. And he went through like months and months and months of no one, nothing happening. Let me pray for you. Okay, sure. Okay, sorry. Right? Nothing. And then, bingo, someone got healed. Same thing with Randy Clark, Bill Johnson, John Wimber. Uh, Heidi Baker, all these people that have powerful healing ministries, written books, <laughs> right? Nothing. Months and months and months and months. And then something happened. Like Randy Clark, 14 years. Those two healings. Hey, 14 years. Then he had a stronger touch from God and it started accelerating. Anyway, over time, the frequency of healing and of God moving and someone getting saved or someone getting transformed by the Holy Spirit increased over time. So I'm like, I wonder why that happened. No one says that. Someone, Daniel, you need to write a book about that. <laughs> but I think they got more attuned to God about what to say and what to do and also closer to him. The more intimacy and authority 
the more closer they were to him, the more they carried his authority. Jesus had the authority on him to do whatever to cause healing in people, right? The closer we are to him, the more authority he extends in us. So it's something we can grow over time. So in other words, don't get discouraged if nothing ever happens, you know, when you pray for someone because you just keep pressing in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, like Jessica does ministry team training, you could go to a training. You could, is Jessica, she's not here, right? She's not in Africa already, is she? No. She's in Peru. No. Uh, maybe you could go to ministry team training without being on the ministry team and just receive and learn. But Sunday nights uh, in San Pedro, we're going to be doing trainings on this, how to pray for people. And it's really simple. It's really exciting. We practice on each other. And then we're going to go out into the streets and interact with people and, and people that come there. So that's an opportunity that's, that's coming up. We'll just let his kingdom come. And then we also want to gather stories. So some of you are doing this already. You're doing goodwill. You're helping people. You're praying for people. So we'd like to hear what God's doing in our congregation and our group here. So if you could email them the stories to that email there or ongoing going forward, okay? And then we'd like to hear about it. We'd like on Sundays to hear about what happened all week in our lives. Wouldn't that be exciting? That you talk to your grandmother and someone talked to their cousin and someone, this thing happened at work and then I met this guy in the store and, and someone got healed and wouldn't that be great? So that is, is going to happen with us. All right. So why don't we stand up? And uh, your worship team, you want to come up? So I'm just going to pr pray some things over you, and then we're going to worship a little bit. You guys okay? Okay, good. Oh, yeah. So yesterday, in extensive preparation, I kept hearing the word, like, graduation. I'm like, graduation? Come on, God, what's, what are we talking about? Hey, it's commencement. Commencement? Yeah, commencement, you get guest speaker, and, you know, you don't get to pick who it is. You have to sit there and listen to them. It's like a graduation. But I felt like what God was in terms of that, is that he's, I think he's like, like at a graduation, the students that are there, after the ceremony, they're being launched into life. They're being launched into their future. They're being called into what God has for them. And I feel like that's one thing God wants to do this morning with you. That whatever this next step that he has for you in your life, whatever it is with your gifting, with relationships that he wants to to commission you to go forward in that and to have the courage to go forward in that, that he's going to go with you in that. So let me just say a prayer here. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, and your truth and your kingdom, Lord. Lord, I pray that for each of us here, Lord, that as we go, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear you, Lord, and eyes to see what you're doing, that you would make us doors of hope, Lord, for others, Lord would be doors of hope that lead to you, Jesus. They would be kingdom partners in the work that you're doing in our communities and our relationships, Lord. Now just receive this now. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you because the Lord has anointed you to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So Lord, bless your sons and daughters here today, Lord, with an anointing from you, Lord, a gifting from you. Lord, activate the giftings you've placed in their hearts now. Wake them up, Lord. Wake them up. Wake up the gift of knowledge, Lord, the gift of prophecy, the gift of mercy, the gift of healing, even administration, service, Lord. Wake up those gifts, Lord, and show each of us where you'd have us to extend those gifts, Lord. Where you, and with who and where and what and how. Lord, we pray this would happen every day with everybody and always, Lord. Lord, just make us a vessel for you, Lord. 